morning everyone this is Tony from her homestead skills coming to you from my kitchen um, we will be going out and about for the day but uh, before that I wanted to focus a little bit on gardening um, it, it, gardening season is starting to uh, come upon us and um, some of my seedlings have already been transplanted and other ones are doing quite well and today I'm just going to transplant this little flat of cucumbers that are definitely ready. So here we go. And uh, yes, I am doing this in my kitchen. It is a little cool out there for me just yet. Um, don't like the cold at all. So, And these little babies do need to be moved. There's no doubt about that. So, um, Anyway, we'll do that today, and uh, I guess I wanted to discuss a little bit about uh, our lockdowns and how it's affecting some people. Now, I don't know if any of you are into reading literature, but it reminds me of um, a beautiful or uh, classic piece of literature called The Decameron which was written, I believe, over 600 years ago. Uh, um, and it was basically regarding uh, people who, <clears throat> today you would call them, they bugged out of Florence, where the uh, plague was running rampant, and uh, um, hid out in uh, what was considered, I guess, a safe villa and uh, they told stories. So the Decameron is basically uh, this group of people telling a hundred little short stories. And yes, it can be a bit difficult to read because it was written 600 years ago. But uh, interesting. And, and it makes me think that, you know, there's a lot of people who push prepping to the point of panic and fear that their food supply is going to be cut off. I'm not one of those people. I don't believe that, you know, it doesn't mean that it can't happen. Well, anything can happen, but uh, I don't believe we're there yet. And the potential to uh, not have any food or, the, you know, for, for governments to cut off their food supply is cutting their own throats, as far as I'm concerned. Um, nothing worse that they can do to um, make their lives more difficult. So, anyway, here we are. This looks like it's they're separating quite nicely. So yeah, why would any government want to um, cut off your food supply. All that does is create panic and fear and riots in the street. And we don't have riots in the street. We don't have people burning buildings down and we don't have a violence because people aren't getting their own way and not getting what they want. There's really not much of that here. Uh, instead, we tend to use the court system. We do protests peacefully. And, and I think that that, if, if it doesn't work, well then, there probably are other, you know, reasons maybe to get a little more forceful. But what we're facing here is a short-term lockdown. It's the third one. And yes, three too many as far as people like me are concerned. I don't really believe that they really benefit all that much. But uh, I'm not the one in charge. And I'm not the one who makes a decision. I can certainly say, you know, I can certainly feel for people who have to make those decisions. <clears throat> the lives that they're destroying in the process. Uh, 
a lot of businesses have gone under and a lot more will continue to go under as long as this pandemic is allowed to create fear and run rampant within our society. Personally, I think it's overblown. I'm not saying that it isn't a terrible thing. I'm not saying that the deaths are not, you know, keeping people alive is not a valid goal and should be done, but uh, I think we know now that who are the people that are really affected, and they are the ones that should be protected. Rather than destroying a whole economy and a whole society, I can understand last year that when you didn't know what was going on, that there were issues. Well, we know a lot more now, and and continuing to propagate fear is not conducive to anything. It won't help. So, anyway, enough of that. Um, if you ever should come across the Decameron, difficult book to read, I'll admit, but it kind of might put a few things in perspective here. We are not <coughs> facing a plague of that magnitude. One third of known society has not been killed. And it's not there. And I don't think we'll ever get there. Okay. So here we are today, planting hope. This is what I'm planting, hope and food for the future. And uh, I'm sure quite a number of you were doing the same thing. These uh, cucumber seedlings have turned out quite lovely. They've grown nicely and not all my seedlings have done this well and I'm really pleased with this bunch. And I just used this little tray here and I staggered them so that they weren't all that close together. And I've got three, six, nine, twelve, maybe fourteen plants which is way more than I need or probably have room to plant. But here we are. So I will be putting these out to, and actually I've been putting these out just about every night to harden off, except last night was way too cold, so all my little plants came indoors again. And yeah, that's probably the most difficult thing to deal with is um, bringing them in and out every single day. It's, it's a little bit of work, but gardening is work. Tilling the soil is work. The harvest is worth it though. Okay. And by the way, I was able to buy plastic cups during this shutdown. <laughs> Interesting. I was kind of concerned about that. How am I going to get something to... Uh, where am I going to buy these cups to uh, be able to transplant my little seedlings? Well, I had no trouble whatsoever. I got these at Dollarama. Could have got them at Walmart. Uh, essential? I couldn't say. Don't understand the reasoning behind and who makes the decisions on what's essential and what isn't. But I have my little cups, and I like these clear ones because you can actually see all the roots when they're grown and how well they're grown. So, okay, that's it for now. I'm just going to take these, water them a bit, and bring them all back outside for the day. Now, these little babies have at least another two to three weeks before they can be put in the ground. And by that time, they should have developed um, a good healthy set of roots and should be ready to be in the ground then. They're actually doing quite beautifully. I'm really pleased with this 
Cucumbers are one of those strange plants that either they do really well or they, the vine starts to die off fairly quickly. So perhaps I'll put these into two separate um, planting areas so that if one is affected, the other one is not. We do have 15 plants here. So for my purposes, that is more than adequate. After all, it is just Mark and I, and uh, I could probably make, these are pickling cucumbers, and I do intend to make uh, pickles, and uh, perhaps I'll make them for others besides Mark and myself. Okay. Okay, so this is Tony from Her Homestead Skills. I hope you enjoyed this little video. I'm on my way now to bring these babies outside along with all the other ones. Uh, hope you have a great day and we'll catch you on the next one.